the avant-garde are people or works that are experimental or innovative, particularly with respect to art, culture, and politics. The avant-garde pushes the boundaries of what is accepted as the norm or the status quo, primarily in the cultural realm. The avant-garde is considered by some to be a hallmark of modernism, as distinct from postmodernism. Many artists have aligned themselves with the avant-garde movement and still continue to do so, tracing a history from Dada through the Situationists to postmodern artists such as the language poets around 1981. The avant-garde also promotes radical social reforms. It was this meaning that was evoked by the Saint Simonian aligned Rodrigues in his essay L'Artiste, La Savante et l'Industelle, which contains the first recorded use of avant-garde in its now customary sense. There, Rodrigues calls on artists to service the people's avant-garde, insisting that the power of the arts is indeed the most immediate and fastest way to a social, political, and economic reform. Theorizing the avant-garde. Several writers have attempted, with limited success, to map the parameters of avant-garde activity. The Italian essayist Renato Pogli provides one of the best-known analyses of vanguardism as a cultural phenomenon in his 1962 book Teoria della Vanguardia. Surveying the historical, social, psychological, and philosophical aspects of vanguardism, Pogli reaches beyond individual instances of art, poetry and music to show that vanguardists may share certain ideals or values which manifest themselves in the non-conformist lifestyles they adopt. He sees vanguard culture as a variety or subcategory of bohemianism. Other authors have attempted both to clarify and to extend Pogli's study. The German literary critic Peter Barr one quarter of GER's theory of the avant-garde looks at the establishment's embrace of socially critical works of art and suggests that in complicity with capitalism, art as an institution neutralizes the political content of the individual work. Barr one quarter of GER's essay also greatly influenced the work of contemporary American art historians such as the German Benjamin H. D. Buckelow. While older critics like Bar One Quarter or GER continue to view the postwar neo avant garde as the empty recycling of forms and strategies from the first two decades of the 20th century, others like Clement Greenberg view it, more positively, as a new articulation of the specific conditions of cultural production in the postwar period. Buckelow, in the collection of essays Neo Avant Garde and Culture Industry, critically argues for a dialectical approach to these positions. Subsequent criticism theorized the limitations of these approaches, noting their circumscribed areas of analysis, including Eurocentric, chauvinist, and genre-specific definitions. Avant-garde and mainstream society The concept of avant-garde refers primarily to artists, writers, composers and thinkers whose work is opposed to mainstream cultural values and often has a trenchant social or political edge. Many writers, Critics and theorists made assertions about vanguard culture during the formative years of modernism, although the initial definitive statement on the avant-garde was the essay Avant-Garde and Kitsch by New York art critic Clement Greenberg, published in Partisan Review in 1939. As the Asara Euro unregistered trademark S title suggests, Greenberg argued that vanguard culture has historically been opposed to high, or mainstream culture and that it has also rejected the artificially synthesized mass culture that has been produced by industrialization. Each of these media is a direct product of capitalism a euro they are all now substantial industries a euro, and as such they are driven by the same profit fixated motives of other sectors of manufacturing, not the ideals of true art. For Greenberg, these forms were therefore kitsch, phony, faked or mechanical culture, which often pretended to be more than they were by using formal devices stolen from vanguard culture. For instance, during the 1930s the advertising industry was quick to take visual mannerisms from surrealism, but this does not mean that 1930s advertising photographs are truly surreal. It was a matter of style without substance. In this sense Greenberg was at pains to distance true avant-garde creativity from the market-driven fashion change and superficial stylistic innovation that are sometimes used to claim privileged status for these manufactured forms of the new consumer culture. A similar view was likewise argued by assorted members of the Frankfurt School, including Theodore Adorno and Max Horkheimer in their essay The Culture Industry, Enlightenment as Mass Deception, 
and also Walter Benjamin in his highly influential The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction, where Greenberg used the German word kitsch to describe the antithesis of avant-garde culture. Members of the Frankfurt School coin the term mass culture to indicate that this bogus culture is constantly being manufactured by a newly emerged culture industry. They also pointed out that the rise of this industry meant that artistic excellence was displaced by sales figures as a measure of worth. A novel, for example, was judged meritorious solely on whether it was a bestseller. Music succumbed to ratings charts and the blunt commercial logic of the gold disc. In this way the autonomous artistic merit so dear to the vanguardist was abandoned and sales increasingly became the measure, and justification, of everything. Consumer culture now ruled. The avant-garde's co-option by the global capitalist market, by neoliberal economies, and by what Guy Debord called the society of the spectacle, have made contemporary critics speculate on the possibility of a meaningful avant-garde today. Paul Mann's theory Death of the Avant-Garde demonstrates how completely the avant-garde is embedded within institutional structures today, a thought also pursed by Richard Schechner in his analyses of avant-garde performance. Despite the central arguments of Greenberg, Adorno and others, the term avant-garde has been co-opted and misapplied by various sectors of the mainstream culture industry since the 1960s, chiefly as a marketing tool to publicize popular music and commercial cinema. It is now common to describe successful rock musicians and celebrated filmmakers as avant-garde, the very word having been stripped of its proper meaning. Noting this important conceptual shift, major contemporary theorists such as Mathieu Kalinescu in Five Faces of Modernity, Modernism, Avant-Garde, Decadence, Kitsch, Postmodernism, and Hans Burton's in the idea of the postmodern, a history, have suggested that this is a sign our culture has entered a new postmodern age, when the former modernist ways of thinking and behaving have been rendered redundant. Nevertheless the most incisive critique of the vanguardism against the views of mainstream society was offered by the New York critic Harold Rosenberg in the late 1960s. Trying to strike a balance between the insights of Renato Poggoli and the claims of Clement Greenberg, Rosenberg suggested that from the mid-1960s onward progressive culture ceased to fulfill its former adversarial role. Since then it has been flanked by what he called avant-garde ghosts to the one side, and a changing mass culture on the other, both of which it interacts with of varying degrees. This has seen culture become, in his words, a profession one of whose aspects is the pretense of overthrowing it. Examples, Music Avant-garde in music can refer to any form of music working within traditional structures while seeking to breach boundaries in some manner. The term is used loosely to describe the work of any musicians who radically depart from tradition altogether. By this definition, some avant-garde composers of the 20th century include Arnold Schoenberg, Charles Ives, Igor Stravinsky, Anton Webern, George O'Neill, Alban Berg, Henry Cole, Philip Glass, Harry Parch. John Cage, Morton Feldman, Richard Strauss, Karl Heinz Stockhausen, Edgard Varese, and Ioannis Xenakis. Although most avant garde composers have been men, this is not exclusively the case. Women avant gardists include Pauline Oliveros, Diamanda Gala S., Meredith Monk, and Laurie Anderson. There is another definition of avant gardism that distinguishes it from modernism Peter Bar 1 quarter or GER, for example, says avant-gardism rejects the institution of art, and challenges social and artistic values, and so necessarily involves political, social, and cultural factors. According to the composer and musicologist Larry Sitsky, modernist composers from the early 20th century who do not qualify as avant-gardists include Arnold Schoenberg, Anton Webern, and Igor Stravinsky. Later modernist composers who do not fall into the category of avant-gardists include Elliot Carter, Milton Babbitt, Gear Paragraph or G.Y. Ligeti, Witold Luto Zarowski, and Luciano Birio, since their modernism was not conceived for the purpose of goading an audience. Theatre Whereas the avant-garde has a significant history in 20th century music, it is more pronounced in theatre and performance art, and often in conjunction with music and sound design innovations as well as developments in visual media design. 
there are movements in theatre history that are characterized by their contributions to the avant-garde traditions in both the United States and Europe. Among these are Fluxes, Happenings, and Neo-Dada. Avant-garde art movements. See also, Avant-garde at Wikipedia Books, Anti-Art, Experimental Film, Experimental Literature, Experimental Music, Experimental Theatre, Lymph and Terrible, List of Avant-garde Artists, Outsider Art, Russian Avant-garde, References. Further reading, Baron, Stephanie, and Morris Dushman 1980. The Avant-garde in Russia, 1910 Euro 1930, New Perspectives, Los Angeles County Museum of Art, and Hirschhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden, Smithsonian Institution, Washington, D.C. Los Angeles, California, Los Angeles County Museum of Art ISBN 0-87587-095-3. Cambridge, Massachusetts, distributed by the MIT Press ISBN 0-262-20040-6. Barzine, Germain 1969. The Avant Garde in Painting. New York, Simon & Schuster. ISBN 0-671-20422-X, Berg, Hubert Van Den, and Walter Far Currency HNDERS. 2009. Metzler Lexicon Avant Garde. Stuttgart, Metzler. ISBN 3-476-01866-0, Crane, Diana. 1987. The Transformation of the Avant-Garde, The New York Art World, 1940 Euro 1985. Chicago, University of Chicago Press. ISBN 0-226-11789-8, Harding, James M., and John Rouse, eds. Not the Other Avant-Garde, The Transnational Foundations of Avant-Garde Performance. University of Michigan, 2006. Coastlanitz, Richard, and H. R. Britton. 2000. A Dictionary of the Avant-Gardes, Second Edition. New York, Shermer Books. ISBN 0-02-865379-3. Paperback Edition 2001. New York, Routledge. ISBN 0-415-93764-7, Kramer, Hilton. 1973. The Age of the Avant-Garde. An Art Chronicle of 1956 and 1972. New York, Farah, Strauss and Giroux. ISBN 0-374-10238-4, Mayhofer. John W. 2009. Rethinking the Vanguard, Aesthetic and Political Positions in the Modernist Debate, 1917-1962. Newcastle-upon-Tyne, Cambridge Scholars Press. ISBN 1-4438-1135-1, Mann, Paul. The Theory Death of the Avant-Garde. Indiana University Press, 1991. Novero. Cecilia 2010. Antidiots of the Avant-Garde, From Futurist Cooking to Eat Art. Pronko, Leonard Cavill. 1962. Avant-Garde, The Experimental Theatre in France. Berkeley, University of California Press. Schuchner, Richard. The Five Avant-Gardes or. And. Or None. The Twentieth Century Performance Reader, Second Ed. Ed. Michael Huxley and Noel Witz. Schmidt Burkhardt, Astrid. 2005. Stambar Currency um der Kunst, zur Genealogie der Avantgarde. Berlin Academy Verlag. ISBN 3 05 004066 1. Online version is available. Cell, Mike. The Avantgarde, Race, Religion, War. Seagull Books, 2011. Shishinov, VA 2007. By Tebska Musée Sovremenogo Iskustva, Istonia Sozdenia i Kolekcia. Minsk, Medizont. ISBN 978-985-6530-68-8 Online Edition.